My name is uh, Dr. Dennis Bordet. I'm a chair of neurology and uh, executive director of the Multiple Sclerosis Center of Oregon at Oregon Health and Sciences University. I've been involved with treating people with MS and conducting research uh, on MS for about 30 years. And we're involved with uh, a number of research projects aimed at trying to find the cause and eventually cure of MS. There's two uh, particular areas that I think are worth uh, talking about that we're involved with. Uh, one of them is our work trying to uh, find treatments that will ultimately be useful for treating progressive MS. We have great uh, therapies for the early phases of MS uh, that are anti-inflammatory therapies. And the major challenge, I believe, facing us in treating MS now is, is how to adequately treat and control progressive MS. Now, we uh, believe that a key problem in progressive MS is the death of the nerve fibers or axons uh, that occurs because of an energy failure uh, within the axons. So the energy of uh, cells uh, is a chemical called ATP, and it's produced by uh, a, something called the mitochondria, which is the factories of energy in the cells. And there is evidence that there's a mitochondrial dysfunction that develops in uh, progressive MS. And uh, if we can develop treatments which will enhance the function of mitochondria, enhance their ability to make energy, we believe that we can prevent and arrest this progressive uh, deterioration of that disease. So we're engaged in uh, developing therapies that are aimed at enhancing the function of mitochondria. And we're particularly interested in an antioxidant called lipoic acid uh, and in uh, finding and developing drugs which um, inhibit the activation of a, uh, a channel called the permeability transition pore in mitochondria. And we have evidence in mice uh, that if you can inhibit opening of this channel, you can protect the axons for damage in an MS-like condition. So that we have a major effort underway to develop therapies uh, that can enhance mitochondrial function and hopefully will be beneficial for progressive MS. A second area uh, that is just now uh, opening uh, uh, in terms of our, our research program involves uh, the discovery uh, at OHSU of a, a virus that causes a multiple sclerosis-like disease in monkeys. This is a novel herpes virus that induces the disease in the monkeys, and it looks very similar to MS. It developed spontaneously in a colony of monkeys at our Oregon uh, National Primate Center, which is part of OHSU. Uh, the virus has been fully characterized and will be engaged in uh, a, a broad spectrum of research. Uh, first of all, on the uh, monkeys, to understand how a, a herpes virus uh, can induce an MS-like disease in a non-human primate, because we believe that uh, this may be a process that's highly relevant to MS. Um, for a long time, there's been a belief that a virus might trigger MS and be ultimately the cause in genetically susceptible people. Um, but m efforts to uh, isolate a virus or f find a specific virus that uh, might be the causative uh, agent in MS have uh, has failed over, over many decades. The, the problem might be that MS is triggered by multiple viruses in genetically susceptible individuals. But it's also possible it might be a virus that's uh, unique and has been difficult to find. Uh, the virus that causes the disease in uh, these monkeys was very difficult to find in the monkeys and demonstrate. Um, it, it actually uh, is called a retinovirus, which means a, a, a hidden virus. It's a class of uh, viruses that are uh, difficult to, uh, to culture and difficult to, to find. So we're going to be engaged in a series of uh, studies to determine whether a, a virus that's uh, similar to this uh, unique virus might be involved with MS.